morning guys today is sunday 17th of december and as usual i'm meditating we're listening to podcast and also cooking a little bit of stuff today i'm listening to a podcast really interesting because there has been a hypothesis which is very like a paradigm that uh, it's called a uh, lipid heart hypothesis that means high lipids bad for heart low lipids good for heart but uh, as we learn biochemistry simple how things work inside the cell it never did make any sense sense why lowering cholesterol or ldl universally should improve heart health or health because uh, Nature has given us LDL cholesterol and cholesterol in general for a reason. Now, initially, we used to say, come on, guys, what? You want to cuddle? We used to say that uh, cholesterol is bad. Then we split open into two. Oh, good cholesterol, HDL is not bad. It is actually good. Uh, as we more and more advance into science, then now we know the LDL, the bad cholesterol, is also split into two. It's like we are splitting atoms into neutrons and protons, and some says, oh, proton is actually made up of more smaller particles. So LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, is actually two types. A small, dense LDL, like a bullet, and big, fluffy, beach ball-like LDL. Now we are telling that big LDL is not bad. It's a small LDL, which is bad. Again, is it true? I mean, obviously, I'm not a lipid expert, but more and more evidence is coming out that Quite a number of the studies that we have done in the past and we took that as gospel, as Bible or Gita or whatever you want to call it, like a, a founding uh, uh, trials that yes, lowering the LDL is good for heart health. And now you're telling that actually you have to measure that particular LDL value, not just LDL. Like before we could make only made, make cholesterol assessment now. We can make LDL and cholesterol and triglyceride and HDL. Similarly, measuring that bullet-like high-dense small LDL is not available everywhere. And if you make that, you will see that if you're somebody's LDL is high, but it is not the small variety, the big variety, you will not be worried. Now again, my question is, is the small dense LDL bad? Because Again, nature has given us nothing which harms our body. So why nature would give us a cholesterol which is harmful for the body? Now, as doctors, we got trained in the medical school. My training was completed in 1992. Most doctors, I think, became doctors, probably not because they wanted to become a doctor, with a passion for, you know, like a burning desire to know everything. Coffee. The door is not going to open. Your sister told, weekends, 8 o'clock. It's not 8 o'clock, so once it is 8 o'clock, I'll let you go out. Okay, so coming back to the LDL. So, I was telling that uh, medical school, we don't get trained to develop a research mind, a scientific mind, a curious mind, we kind of become like, I'm telling you so, so listen to me. I'm the big lobby. I am the pharma lobby who is doing drug research because I want to sell billions of these drugs and make billions of money. So I will find a research which will develop a new drug. And some of the drug companies and studies deliberately altered the data to show only the good data in a good light and not the bad data. And these concrete examples of this, they would have vested interest in making a drug that will say, yes, your cholesterol level will go down and it will actually help you. But is it actually helping? So you can fudge the data on cardiovascular event, maybe. Look, has the person has a stroke? Oh, maybe mini stroke, maybe mm, nothing maybe minor heart attack, minor this and that, but you cannot fake mortality data. Either patient is dead or alive. So if you look at the, all the cholesterol um, trials and mortality data, you'd be very surprised to see that quite a number of statin trials and cholesterol lowering trials, LDL lowering trial, did not show any benefit in terms of mortality. 
I admit there are few situations where statin is very good reducing mortality, like familial hypercholesteremia, when normally the kids die pretty early for massive heart attack and cardiovascular events. So think about it, be curious. Einstein says curiosity beats intelligence because intelligence can dissect but unless guided by curiosity and a fresh mind. So don't get downed in dogmas. I started, I listened to a a TED talk by a biochemist professor who was telling that doctors told me eat 60% carb, just take my metformin medicine and this medicine and insulin and all that your blood sugar will come down and it never did. Then she went back to the blackboard, the drawing board, and said, okay, let me revise the glucose metabolism, like how glucose actually is metabolized and role of insulin and stuff. Then he realized giving more insulin is just treating a number, glucose level, but that glucose is still inside the body, going into the fat cells and causing liver inflammation and mesenteric inflammation and on all sort of bad uh, neurochemicals, cytokines and damaging chemicals. So she started cutting carbohydrate from a standard healthy, so-called healthy diet of 60% carbs to very low, like 20% carbs. And miraculously, actually not miraculous, it's science. The blood sugar level came down, hemoglobin A1C came down. And that TED talk, I think 2015, opened my mind because I've got a really curious mind. And I have become a doctor because nobody told me to become a doctor because I was a sick child born with one lungs. So I wanted to become a doctor from my primary school. And I, I, I would read anything and everything, not just gastroenterology. That's my uh, specialty on anything. So sometimes I probably offend and annoy my other specialty colleagues. Like say, the other day I annoyed a psychiatric colleague. And uh, she was telling, oh, are you going to, into our field now? I said, you don't have any field. It is everybody's field. So I, I, I got, it's not privy to you that you will have all the psychology books and psychiatry books. And I read your books. I'm pretty sure she doesn't read my books, gastro books. So I read all the other specialty journals. So my view of medicine is quite broad spectrum. And that's what Absence of that and lack of that is actually keeping us doctors developing a scientific mind because we are very tunneled. So go and look at the research. The problem now that the drug industry are facing because now patients are challenging them. People are challenging them because of the social media. Now low-carb diet, keto diet, carnivore diet. None of this we heard about 20 years ago, but now people are eager to try because they are suffering from colitis, joint pain, mental fatigue and um, cardiovascular problem, dementia. So they want to try anything and everything beside the, what medicine has got to offer. And if you think about Hippocrates, the father of medicine says, let food be thy medicine. And interestingly, I was chuckling the other day myself because I always wanted to become a cardiologist, the glamour of a tiny organ. But then I realized it says the way to somebody's heart is through the stomach. So fix the gut, fix your heart, fix your brain, fix everything. Coming back to the original talk about LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, I told this uh, two varieties, the small dense bullet-like LDL, which is the bad bit, everybody thinks now. Now, is itself not dangerous. When it attaches with bacterial cell wall degradation product like called LPS, lipopolysaccharide, then it becomes dangerous. Then when it hits the areas of turbulence in the blood vessels like bifurcation of an artery, bend of an artery, it hits. It's like simple mechanics. And then that gets embedded into the endothelium lining. And then that starts the inflammatory process, not because of LDL cholesterol, but because of the LPS bit of the. So we knew that if your CRP is high, inflammatory markers is high, cardiovascular risk, etc. goes up. Every time we eat food, any of this, we need to absorb the nutrition and inevitably we will absorb some of the bacteria as well. So if you measure your LPS level after food, even in healthy people, there'll be small spike. But the cell immune system will mop it all up. So we will be okay. But when there is a leaky gut, when there is a damaged gut, when there is an inflamed gut, it can come and it may overwhelm. And that's when the cardiovascular problem starts. And if you combine that, combine that leaky gut with 
excess sugar, excess processed food, preservatives, then it completes the whole picture of metabolic health and poor gut. And then everything cascades, obesity, diabetes, diabetes, dementia, cancer and everything. I'm going to stop now. I'm just going to make some, uh, what do you call, uh, palak paneer. So this is my palak. I'm going to blenderize it. And my paneers are here. Yeah, paneer is the Indian cottage cheese. It's a very good source of protein and fat and everything almost. Good test. This is a bad food. So I'm, I'm quite inclusive in my food choices. I will have bad food, but quite sparingly. As long as you follow not 80-20, maybe 90-10 ratio of bad food and good food, you're covered. Because I love food in general. I, I don't discriminate. I think I'll make an exception. Let them go. Coffee, you are liberated now. Okay. Everybody loves freedom and everybody loves to go to their loved ones. And their loved ones are all sleeping upstairs. My son, my daughter. So that's how they go. Anyway, I probably have got ADHD. I shift subject extremely rapidly. Sometime I come back, sometime I don't. So experiment with herbs, experiment with vegetables. So that is going to go into that and lots of spices in that. And then palak paneer is done.